this is our day one on learning API testing. And uh, let's set the agenda for today. Um, we will talk about, you know, what is API testing, why this is required, how to do API testing, right? Who should do API testing, right? And where does API testing comes into picture, right? We'll talk about some of the example also. Okay, so let's start with this. Let's understand first this part. I'm taking this part first. Where does this API testing comes into picture? And moreover, what is API testing, right? First of all, what is API testing or what is API, okay? So let's understand that through one example, okay? You must have seen websites where you can book, uh, let's say hotels or you can book flight, right here you can search any hotel and you can book it correct and this is called user interface this is called user interface or the presentation layer so whatever you are doing here is related to doing some testing on user interface right you have to open the chrome browser and then you have to open a particular website and then you can perform something, okay? So for example, let's say there is uh, some hotel which I want to check whether that is available or not. Let's take any, let's search, let's Google it. So I am searching for, let's say, um, T country, Muna, okay? There is a hotel in Munar, which is like this. We will go to their website and we will check whether, um, you know, availability we are checking, basically. We are checking the availability. So, let's put some date. So, we will put the date, let's say, um, 30th November, 1st December checkout, and we'll say check availability. Okay. And this will show me the availability. It's saying, sorry, all rooms, right? This is not available. There is something available like this, and it is showing me the um, this amount. And you can book this. Okay. So this is showing me the detail. How this is working? <clears throat> Let's draw a picture. What is happening here is let me draw a new picture here. What is happening is you have a website. You have a website here. The name of the website is something like this, right? KTDC booking. Okay. So you have, you are opening it, <clears throat> this website in Chrome. You are opening this in Chrome or any browser. You are opening it in browser. Then you are filling some form and it is interacting with the KTDC booking, right? This website must have some server right and the database so what is happening is this is interacting with some server okay so this ktdc booking.com <clears throat> they have their own application server that is called application server and then this application server has business logic Right, they have business logic and some other things related to their business, related to the booking and everything. They must be having their own database, correct? 
there they put all the detail about um on what date what kind of room is available and everything correct if you see this website i'm getting the detail about um this particular suite is available let's say with this price right other details about the price and all correct so type of room everything is there in their database so this is database let's say and how interaction is happening you are requesting to this you are requesting to this that through your website right it is going here as a request and then this particular application server is connecting to database to fetch the detail, right? And then once database is showing the detail, it is coming back here. And then it will come back to user interface, right? So this is a very simple process happens whenever you uh, go to any website, and sending request okay from the front end okay so this is where you this is called presentation layer or ui layer correct this is ui or presentation layer okay this is generally made of what html css and javascript html CSS, JavaScript, correct? And when it is interacting to the server, right? Here, basically, it is the application server. The server is just a machine, but there should be some software, right? There should be some code written to accept this detail from the browser and then doing something, maybe connecting to the database to fetch the detail, right? So this is generally API layer. What is it? What it is? It is API layer, okay? Or application layer here. This is generally made of, you know, different programming language. We, you write code in different programming language. Maybe let's say C sharp, .NET, Java, Python, right? There may be different programming languages are used here. And you do in this layer, you do API testing. Okay. API testing happens here. And we'll talk about more about this. Then you are sending some request, right? To fetch the data from the database. What is database? Database is generally, let's say, Oracle or uh, MySQL or PostgreSQL, right? There are different um, database systems are there. This is also a machine, right? Where your data is stored. Once you fetch the data from database, in response, you get the, you know, you, you, you fetch through query, basically. You write a query to get the detail, correct? And in the response, you will get how many rows are present and all these details. There are some details which are useful. There may be some detail which is not useful, right? So here, query result set will come. And then in this business logic layer, this will again be what we say filtered and go back to your browser in a format which, which can be read through HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, okay? So it happens like this. Now the question is, we do UI <clears throat> testing here on, on the front end side, right? So whatever you want to test, let's say, I have a test case to check whether um, once user clicked on check webility, the result should be shown. It's a very simple check that 
whenever user opens this website and put the check-in date and check-out date with some room and guest detail and click on the check availability, right? The result should be displayed. The result should be displayed. There is a basic check. Now, <clears throat> this is about, you don't know what is the logic behind it, right? You, you, you only know that I have to put this input and I should get this output, something like this, where room's detail should be visible, the room picture should be visible. If something is not available, then error should be displayed or the message should be displayed that, sorry, rooms are not available for the date range. This kind of functional check you do. And this takes time, right? This takes time because you have to open a browser. You have to put all the details manually. You have to click on the check ability and then you have to verify the details, right? Whereas if you want to do API testing, you can skip this part. You can skip the UI layer part. You can directly, you can directly hit API layer, okay? It's possible that you can directly hit API layer, okay? It's possible. So, your time will be saved if you are directly hitting the API layer. But how to hit this API layer? So, the answer is there are different tools available in the market which you can use to hit the API. But the next question is what I will put in the API then? How to, you know, put all this date and everything because in UI, it's very simple. You can simply click on check availability and you can see the result. But when I'm doing API testing, how, how will be able to do it? So generally, when you do API testing, right, you should have proper user manual or API manuals. Okay. So how if we talk about how to perform it, right? You should have API, API user manual, okay? How to use the APIs. Now the question is why developers are allowing you to directly hit the API, right? Without checking the UI. So let's understand. UI testing is also important, right? We cannot skip it. UI testing is important because you'll be able to see pictures are coming or not, messages are coming in red color or not, right? Those kind of checks are very important from the user perspective, from the UI perspective, from the usability perspective, right? But the functionality, the core functionality, right? You can check it without opening UI also. So for example, if I want to check whether rooms are available for this and my results are coming or not, right? That you can check without opening your browser also, right? So let me ask you a question and you can put in chat window, right? So let's assume that you have access to the database, correct? And you want to check whether for 38th November check-in, uh, rooms are available or not, particular kind of room is available or not. So for example, let's say continental plan kind of room, suite room is available or not. Can you do that? If you have access to the database, Yes, we can do that because ultimately all the things are present in database. See, what user interface does, user interface does nothing. It is just presenting the detail. These details are ultimately 
coming from your database only. I'll give you another example. Let's open Amazon.in. Okay, so that you will relate with this. If you will open Amazon. Okay. So for example, let's search something. If I'll search um, t-shirts, something like this, t-shirts for men, right? This is showing me all the detail, correct? So what do you think? Is there any role of user interface here to show uh, American crew and 669 rupees, 67% off? No, UI is just to present the detail, correct? How to present it, where to present it, when the things will be in, um, you know, bold format, when the, how many stars should be visible, you know, pattern of these things, right? This check boxes, the real detail, all these details are coming from the database only. So if you have access to the database, you can directly fire a query and check the details, but then you have to be good on writing the queries, right? You have to be good on writing the queries. You should have knowledge about uh, what are the tables available there, right? How to write the query, how to join the queries and all, right? You can get the detail if, if you have proper access. Fine. And now, let's say if you have access to the API layer, right, then you don't have to write the query, right? So there is a particular way how to find the detail through API layer. So I'm just giving a random example. Don't take it like, uh, you know, real example here. The thing is, probably I can hit this uh let's say our website was this right ktdc so this one i will hit to api and then i'll pass some parameters okay so start or check in date check in date is equals to some day let's say this would be 11 30 2022 and checkout date is equals to, um, let's take it like 12, no, no, this is, yeah, month, day, year, and whatever parameter you want to pass with that. So for example, here we have put two, uh, room and guest, right? So one room, two guests. So here we will say room count, room count is equals to one and guest, G-U-S-T, just a minute, count is equals to two, something like this. So this is possible through checking through API also. So what I will do is like, I'll hit this API through some tool. I'm not talking about which tool we'll use, but just get an idea that we will hit this directly with these parameters, okay? So you don't have to open the website. In response, in response, it will give you something. It will give you some detail in JSON format, right? Which you have to read and understand whether things are working fine or not, okay? Fine, fine, okay. So I'm opening a presentation for today to understand things in detail. And then we'll do start practical from tomorrow, okay? Let's understand this first. I am starting the slideshow. Fine, so we are going to learn about API. What is API? API is an acronym and it stands for Application Programming Interface, okay? So API means it provides you an interface to interact with application. It's like this, okay? 
And what is the API then? API is set of routines, functions, protocols. In simple language, these are functions. Let's say if I'll, I'll ask you that uh, I want to create a program where the input will be um, principal rate and time. And can you give me simple interest as a result? Right. So those who knows a bit of programming, they will write something like this. I'm writing it and I'll make you understand also. Okay. So I'm writing in Java language, let's say. Okay. So what I will say is, first of all, I should know it, right? The business logic uh, about how to calculate simple interest, right? So simple interest is something, I'll give you a simple example is, if you have, let's say, um, 5,000 rupees or dollar in your bank, uh, for let's say four years and bank gives you let's say 10 percent you know uh, interest okay on your money then what is simple interest simple interest is after four years how much interest you will get in amount okay so for example after four years, how much you will get in return? You have saved, let's say you have put 5,000 rupees in your, or $5,000 in your bank. So how much uh, interest you will get after four years, right? So simple formula is, you must be knowing the formula, right? So formula is, P into R into T by 100, correct? So principal in multiplication by rate, multiplication by time, and divided by PRT divided by 100, okay? So that will be simple interest. I'm writing in shortcut SI. So if I want to write in program, I'll, I'll first make a function, right? So it's a better way to write a function first. So I'll say public void. I, I'm not going to teach you programming. Don't worry about it. I'll write simple logic. You will understand it. Don't worry. Calculate simple interest. And this will actually calculate. So this same formula will come here. Okay, so these need three values, right? So I, I should have these three values. So double means a kind of data type. You can have integer also. Double P, then double R, and double D. And once this is calculated, I want to return it. So I'll say, return si okay and here i will say um return double okay don't worry about programming part okay just let's let's understand only that see this is a simple function simple code whenever this will be called with three values it will simply tell me what will be the uh simple interest okay so for example if i call this function if i call this function i'll pass some values let's say 5000 comma rate is let's say 10 percent and time is 4 so this is like i'm calling this function okay and this function once we will it will be called it will interact with this function Okay, so in the same way, what happens in user interface is whenever you are, you are putting some values, let's say whenever you click on check availability, what happens in background is basically it calls a function. 
basically once you are filling all your details and you click on check availability right so all this data is flowing from here right so it's like request is generated with some data request generation happens and it goes to the api layer and there you know this function is present i have given you simple example that okay let's say if you're you're calculating this right this kind of function will be called here maybe they have functions like uh check availability check availability or some other function right i'm just giving an example which in turn what they what it does it there are some code is written to generate the query there are some code will be written to generate the query and that query will be fired to database so this application layer interacts with the database then database gives you back the result and then you make it presentable in the ui part it's like this okay. so here you are getting the detail now the thing is if you can get the detail here there are other websites also so for example if i will go to agoda and i'll so agoda is a website which which again is useful for uh, booking the hotels right so let's say the same hotel which has its own official website uh, and i'll check it from here also so let me active country right so let's search t country there is a place t country okay t country is a hotel basically and or a resort and i'll put the same date 30th november 1st december two adults one room search and when i'm searching it this will be showing me some detail so this is showing me that um, this is gone right and nothing is available let's change the date let's change the date where we will be able to see something so let's put something on january right so 17 to 18 january and let's see basic details are coming here 17 to 18th january yeah some details are present let me put it here also 17 18th january because this is holiday season so probably the rooms are not available so let's see yeah so it's showing me oh it's saying anyways it's showing me some detail try changing the detail because they are working with a particular kind of room right this agoda maybe so let's check it i clicked on the select room or something and this is saying for that, that date it is not available right and some other detail it is showing now the question is agoda is also showing some detail the official website is also showing some detail how this is possible right so the reason is what generally these hotels are doing is they are giving the access of apis to different website okay so let me draw again another picture what happens is let me create a new one here and let me save this so that i'll share this picture with you okay don't worry so okay let's create a new one. so now what is happening there is one hotel website correct but let's not talk about the website because agoda we are opening through agoda 
and we are able to see the detail whether this is available or not correct that means agoda is able to reach to uh, the the database of uh, this munarti country hotel correct so what is happening now so now i am here i am agoda agoda.com okay now i am interacting with the api layer directly okay i am interacting with apis of that hotel right so hotel i'm not writing the name of the hotel the hotels okay and then these hotels have their own database right these hotels have their own databases correct so what is happening now i am requesting from agoda okay then these apis are interacting with their own database and in turn i am getting some response correct from these only it's like this see database perspective this is coming here again and then coming to the ui part okay it's like this so what happens is all the hotels generally right who are listed in agoda what they are doing is they have given the access of apis to agoda they are not giving the access to us right like they will not give access to us right they they are giving it to big companies like say make my trip or agoda or booking.com right those guys it's like this why they are giving it the access of their apis because they are getting some business from them correct let's take another example you must have opened ola or uber right so let's let's write it ola or uber for um your um, cab cab booking okay rental cab booking you are using this kind of um applications now when you do a cab booking it shows you uh start point right start location and your destination right you put the destination also where you want to go and then it shows you a map correct once you book it there is a map which shows you how many how much time it will take uh, the driver to come to you and then once the um your ride is started it shows you you know the the whole map like on which route you are going now see ola and uber their main task is cab booking right so cab booking is generally like you you are interacting with a driver and driver is providing you a service and your your um particular uh, trip is done okay then their main task is not to show your map right so what they do is they take the help of let's say other apis let's say google maps right so google has already created map right so there are different companies who is taking help of google maps so for example anything so you order your food also right from different websites correct when you order your food and then it it again shows you a map everything nowadays shows a map right so wherever it, there is a delivery right so you should see the map now the question is this food delivery app do they create their own maps or do they create their own application to show the maps no they simply call let's say um google maps api and google takes money from them to use their maps so for every hit let's say i want to see something right so let me give you a simple example let's open google map so that you know things will be clear for you map 
So maps.google.com and I search something there. Let's say if I search mountain view California, something like this, it shows me something, right? And then I can have directions and everything. Now, the same thing can be used by other website also. I'm opening directly this google.com and everything. But this is a kind of API call. If you see it properly, it's google.com slash maps slash place slash mountain view and something is happening, right? This call can be done from other website also. So what I'm saying is there may be Ola Uber, right, where you want to search, let's say in Ola also, you want to go to Mountain View. From one place to Mountain View, you want to go. So what it, it does is, from the starting point, it hits this. It hits this API in the background. And then in their application, they show you this kind of UI. Or their own, you know, customized uh, user interface, but basically they are getting the detail from Google, okay? Or the app or the map provider services, okay? Same thing happens with flight booking also, right? So when you open any website, let's say yatra.com or makemytrip.com and you search for the flights, you're getting the latest detail. Correct. How you are getting it? Because different websites um, have given the different service provider, let's say Indigo or Air India, they have provided access to their APIs. Okay. Fine, guys. Just a minute. So I'm going back to the presentation part about the API. And uh, How it works? API gets the request from the user and gives the response without exposing internal logic. So even when you are hitting the APIs, you don't know what is happening in the background. Do you know how it is able to show you the result here, right? You don't know. When you are hitting anything, let's say I want to search t-shirts, right? And when you click here, do you know what, what is happening internally? You don't know. You are just getting the detail. In API testing also, you will get the result. You don't know how this is working. Okay. We will talk about this maybe tomorrow that uh, then how to write the test cases about APIs, right? We will we'll talk about it, right? So basically, we saw this thing today, right? There is a presentation layer. You do GUI testing on presentation layer. There is business layer where you do your API testing to check whether business logics are working fine or not. It's like this, okay? I'll share this presentation. Don't worry. I'll share this presentation in our groups so you can see that. And we'll continue talking about these things. But then what to do today as a practical, as a practical what to do? Install Postman, okay? So there are two things you have to install. One is Notepad++, okay? Notepad++, install it. If you are using Windows, so you have to search, you have to Google Notepad++, you will get a particular website. From there, you can get it. And another thing is you have to um, install Postman, okay? So from where you have to get, let me show you both the things. Google.com, Notepad++. This is just to write something. We need this, okay? It's, it's just a better version of Notepad. So this is the website I'm giving you in chat window. And another thing is we need Postman. So let's search Postman. Okay, so Postman has the official website, postman.com. And you have to sign up. 
and then you can get it okay product once you do a sign up you will get the detail okay let me search postman download for windows yeah so here you can get it for windows 64 bit and based on your app application uh, system it will show you and you have to download it if it asks you to register with your uh, let's say gmail or email ids register it right? don't worry about how to use it and everything we will we'll do that thing tomorrow 